Okay, thank you very much for clicking on, welcome. Today we're going to talk about the importance of branding. Now, you may be a side hustle, you may be a reseller, antique dealer, whatever. The importance of branding still is significant for you. I'm going to explain to you exactly why branding is important, how to create branding, what branding is, everything, all in this uh, short video. And the idea is that once you build this brand and associate it with your product, that it will help you get sales. So the importance of branding. What is branding? In simple terms, an association. An association with one thing and another, hopefully positive. So, your brand, whether it's your name, a company name, whatever you want it to be, you want that to be associated with a positive feeling or a feeling of confidence or goodwill when people hear or see your brand. So it's an association with your name and positive feelings. So why bother with a brand? A brand goes beyond the aesthetics to trusted values. Now I know a lot of my followers are eBay resellers and Etsy sellers and things like that, but a brand is still extremely important. And if you haven't established one yet, look to the future. Because do you always want to be selling on eBay? Do you always want to be selling on Etsy? Or do you want to be uplifted away from these marketplaces into maybe your own website or something like that in the future? Start working on a brand now can really, really set you apart from the rest of the world. So, as I've already said, a brand goes beyond the, set, the aesthetics to a trusted values. It builds trust and credibility. It ensures customer loyalty and ensures premium prices and longevity of the business. It makes you stand out. Let's uh, take an example. Uh, you have two t-shirts in the market, both of very similar quality. One plain, one with a Nike tick. Which one are you going to pick? Which one demands the most money? They both may be from 100 grade beautiful cotton, but you're still going to go with the one with the brand because it's a trusted name. That brand, that br they've worked on for decades making that brand, but that brand now demands a higher price for a same, similar item just because it has the brand on there because you know it's associated with quality, it's associated with whatever message they come across, and it's a trusted brand. So what is a brand? The only way I can explain that is if I give you an example. My brand is Antiques Arena, but it could be anything, even your name. Look at the name Trump. Like him, dislike him, his name is his brand and it's worth millions. But whatever your brand is, whatever you decide to make your brand, you have to stick with it. You have to work at reinforcing the message that anytime someone hears your name or your brand name, that they associate it positively. And you need to decide your brand message, whether it's, in my case, sustainable living, recycling, um, I'm in the antiques and collectibles industry, so for me, it could be preserving history and the story behind the antiques. Whatever you want your message to be, um, I don't care whether you're buying trainers, car boot sales to sell them on, whether you're a media company, figure out your message, figure out your meaning and your brand and stick to it. Find a positive message that you can promote within your brand. So how do you create a brand? Well, firstly, identify your brand. Now, you can only identify your brand when you, first of all, know your market. So you first of all need to research your customer base, research what you want to do. Now, in my case, again, I want to buy and sell antiques. I'm a, a side hustler, a reseller, whatever you want to call it. Um, so my audience is anybody who wants to escape a nine to five job and make money on the side, anybody who wants to do reselling or earn money, or anybody who loves antiques, collecting and preserving history. So I got a massive, massive audience. I went with Antiques Arena because obviously the antiques was in the name um, and it was something that I felt I liked. It was a brand I could believe in, I could stand behind. And I've worked on the Antiques Arena brand for about five, six years, seven years. Now, everywhere I go, everybody knows Antiques Arena. I go to antique fairs up in England, people say hello to me, they all know Antiques Arena. If I go somewhere, they can say to me, go and look through that box there, knowing they're safe, they know they trust me. That's my brand. 
I've worked hard on my brand. I've taken losses by delivering pieces that that other companies have let me down on and I've had to take a loss to make sure the item gets to where it belongs. If I make a promise, I try to stick to it. That is my brand. The hardest thing is to be consistent. Now, when I say consistent, what I mean is without reward. Now, there will be a reward in the long term, but in the short term, not many of us like doing things without instant rewards. So we like to do some listing, we get some sales. We like to write an article, we put it out, we get some praise. That could be a reward or just even justification for doing the item can be a reward. But when you're building a brand, it takes time, it takes consistency, it takes constant work and effort, and it takes a long time to build that trust. When you understand people are skeptical, people have been ripped off, there's a lot of scammers in the world, to build a brand that associates loyalty, trust, premium prices, it's worth it. But you've got to stick with it. Your brand logo. Even if it's a simple eBay page, right? Create shipping labels with your brand logo or your brand name on a postage, uh, a shipping label or shipping receipt. Um, I've headed letter paper if you want to do letters or emails. If you can put your brand in your eBay descriptions. If you go in to go down the line of a website, make sure you have the brand on the website. Have the same social media accounts so it's all linked. I've got Antiques Arena on my website. I've got Antiques Arena on Facebook. I've got Antiques Arena on Twitter and Instagram. I own Antiques Arena. i got .com and .co.uk. You've got to have the old market within your brand. you then got to focus on your USP. Now, what is a USP? It's your unique selling position. What makes you stand out against the crowd? What can you say about you that is going to instill confidence um, and positivity into other people? Again, in my case, because I'm an antique dealer, um, I focus on multiple things. I can focus on the fact I do live treasurance. Every day is a treasure and I absolutely love it. I'm preserving history of antiques uh, and every antique I discover can have a story. I can literally talk to you about every single item I find. And some of the pieces of history I have found have been nothing short of breathtaking and ended up in museums. My USP is I can offer the thrill of discoveries and treasures that I find. I do tutorial videos. Uh, tips and secrets, teaching people how to do this. I have 25 to 30 years experience in doing this. That is another unique position not a lot of people got. People may be coming into the market now, but if you've got five or seven years on them, they're never going to catch you up. What I will say is if you don't want to be caught up, whatever work you're doing now, double it. If you think you're working hard, work even harder. Because I promise you, the people coming into the market, flooding the market, are working harder. Sure. So, your message. What does your company mean? My message is, I'm preserving history, I'm helping to recycle, do my little bit to save the planet, and I'm a massive, trusted figure now in the antiques industry, side hustles, reseller community. You can work on building a community, you can... Start your own YouTube channel, your own Twitter account, anything. Whatever it takes to build that trust, the brand, and the presence. The more people that know your brand and associate it with a positive feeling, the better your, your brand will be and the longer your business will live. Even if it's a short-term loss, and I'm going to give you the example. I've used it multiple times now. I sold a decanter from UK to Australia. I shipped it by Royal Mail. They refused to sell it, uh, send it on the airplane. They sent it back to me. They said it was dangerous. I then sent it through Parcel Force, which was still Royal Mail, paid double the price, took a £50 loss, and it went through. I took the £50 loss to make sure that the people in Australia who bought my item receive my item. The power of word of mouth is more powerful than anything. And if you got, let's say you're in the reselling community, but whatever business you're in, if someone comes up to me and says, 
do you know so and so? And let's say my name, for argument's sake, they go, do you know Antiques Arena? And if they've had a negative experience with me, they're going to go, oh yeah, and I don't like that person at all. They've done blah, 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 blah. And, and instantly, the negativity is being transferred across and then across again and again and again. Whereas if they only have positive, then when they're talking to other people within the communities, it'll be all positive reinforcement. And what you will find is, if people are happy with the product, if people are happy with the service, if people are happy with the way you've treated them and the price, they will boast and brag about you to other people. Word of mouth is a very powerful way to get your brand around. There are plenty of other options. There's adverts, there's leaflets, there's posters, there's labels. We'll go into that in a whole other video. But ask yourself this now. I don't care what business you're in. Do you have a brand? Do you have a clear message for your brand? Are you pushing that message? Are you pushing your USP, your unique selling position? All of these things, if you're not 100% focused on building your brand, you're not working on your future. Anyway, this was a little clip I wanted to put into uh, a live video i done uh, today, and I kind of got distracted by an hour's long questionnaire with Q&As, so I thought I'm going to break it down into multiple videos so that you still get what I wanted to put in, out in the videos. Build your brand, build your future. If you like my videos, please like, share, comment, anything you feel you want to do. I just hope you get value out of my videos. Uh, my website is antiquesarena.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.